These presentations will work a comprehensive bookkeeping problem both within Excel as well as within QuickBooks. Excel having the advantages of being able to see all the components and how all those components fit together to make the end product, that end product, the financial statements. QuickBooks having the advantage of being able to use forms, simple data inputs, and an automated system in order to convert that simple data input into the end product, the financial statements. We will work each component of the problem in Excel first and then work that same information in QuickBooks. Hello, in this presentation, we will enter service items and the related invoice within to our bookkeeping problem in Excel, keeping in mind how that same information might be input into accounting software such as QuickBooks. If you would like more information about the QuickBooks Pro, take a look at our comprehensive course in the link below. We're going to start off with a quick look at QuickBooks and then jump over to our Excel worksheet and enter the data there. We go through QuickBooks. We're going to first look at what the items are and get a quick look at how they help in order to drive the, the invoices and the creation of the invoice. So the items, we could go into uh, lists and item lists and find these items and we could create a new item. And we're going to look at an item and it's going to be a service item. And this is just to show us when we go to Excel, uh, how QuickBooks can really do these journal entries through the use of forms, in this case, an invoice, and those being driven by these items. So this is going to be an item for uh, Judy guitar lessons. We're going to set up guitar lessons for some of our instructors here for the guitar shop. And this will be a service item. So we do not have to deal with inventory, meaning no cost of goods sold. We'll say the rate is 190, no tax needed. And then we have the account, it's gonna be service, that's a type of revenue account, rather than having it in a merchandising type of an account. Once we have that set up, then we can go and just uh, record the invoice much more quickly. We're gonna do the same thing for other service items for other instructors, Angela. We're gonna have a, a 150 rate whenever we make an invoice for the service items there the uh, revenue account will be a service item and we'll do the same thing for uh, another instructor Rebecca so we're gonna have three instructors different rates this one's gonna be a hundred dollars rate per hour and then we got the same account that's gonna be a service account we're not selling guitars we're gonna use these items now in order to create the invoice and then we'll just uh, put that same information into Excel to see how they relate so then we, we would just create the invoices and as we go through this, we're going to select um, the invoice information. In this case, we're going to have a star is the client. If we add a new client, we'd have to add the client here. And then we populate this information as we have for the merchandise invoices. But this is going to be a service invoice. In that, we've got the date. We've got the invoice number populates automatically. And then all we need to do is select the item, which in this case isn't a merchandising item but a service item so we're going to say that this is judy's guitar lessons and we got five hours and it'll populate automatically calculate the total at in this case 950 and that'll give us the total 950 no sales tax in our uh, case because there's only sales tax on uh, tangible items in in this circumstance and therefore we have the 950 so that, so the journal entry related to this bit more simplified than one related to a merchandise sales that of the accounts receivable going up that's going to happen typically almost just about any time we have an invoice that's what an invoice means for quickbooks is that accounts receivable is going to be going up and the credit will go to a revenue account that of the uh, service revenue in this case let's take a look at this example in uh, excel we're going to jump back and do a few of these invoices We'll now enter this information into the Excel worksheet. So we're going to say that the date is going to be on 228. We're billing these as of the end of the month, 228, if we can get that correct. And we're going to say that this is going to be an invoice. And therefore, first question typically is cash effective. No, we're going to say no in this case because it's an invoice. And that means we got accounts receivable expecting to receive a check in the mail. We're going to say that the receivable is a debit amount and we need to make it go up. So we're going to do the same thing to it, which in this case is another debit. So we'll copy the receivable, put that up top in Q5, right click and paste one, two, three. The other side will be 
uh, some same form of revenue as we've seen in the prior uh, transactions where we have an invoice, but this time it's not going to be the merchandise sales, but instead the service, that being service revenue. That will be a credit. We already know it's a credit because we had to, I'm scrolling back up, we debited the, well, we should have put the debit. We debited it. We have in the debit section here. The accounts receivable and therefore must be crediting the other account if there are only two involved, as there are here. And we also know that we will be crediting this because it's a credit balance account. It needs to go up and therefore we will do the same thing to it. Remember that revenue accounts typically only go up in the credit direction. We'll copy the service account there. We're going to copy that. We're going to scroll back up. We're going to put that in cell Q6, right clicking, pasting to Q6. We're going to put the amount, the amount of 950. We can even calculate this out too. We could say, instead of putting 950, we're going to say equals 190 times 5 hours. So that's our rate, hourly rate for, in this case, uh, Judy's guitar lessons. And that gives us the 950. And we had 5 hours, and that gives us the 950. Then we have the credit, and that will be the same 950. We will then post this, and before we do, we'll freeze the pane. So we're going to go up here to AJ1, AJ1. We're going to go to the View tab. We're going to go to the Windows group and freeze panes. Then we'll freeze the panes to lessen the pain of posting. Now that we've journalized the journal entry and freeze the panes, we're going to post that to the general ledger. And so first, we'll start with the accounts receivable. Accounts receivable, second account on the trial balance. It will then be the second account on the general ledger. Let's scroll over a little bit so we can see it better, a little bit more closely. And we're going to put that in cell AQ15. AQ15. We're going to select equals in AQ15 and say that that equals this 950 in R5. So that equals R5. Once we do that, we're going to enter, and that'll give us 2099 in the accounts receivable balance. That balance should then be also in the trial balance, and we should be out of balance by the 950. Scrolling back up, recording the second portion to service revenue, or service, it is revenue, it's a revenue account, although we don't have that in the name at this time. It's going to be down here in the revenue section, in the income statement section. Remember, it's in order, assets, liabilities, equity revenue and expenses so we're going to scroll to the right till we see the service revenue so we're scrolling right there are the assets here are the liabilities there's the equity here are the revenue accounts and expense accounts we're scrolling up we see revenue in cell bl8 bl8 and we're going to say that that equals and point to s6 and that'll pull over the 950 credit there's the 950 credit which will also be on the trial balance. Scrolling back to the trial balance, we're going to see that 950 here as well, right there. That, of course, increases our net income and puts us back in balance. In this case, it decreases the loss, meaning the credits of revenue are less than the debits of expenses by $189 at this time. We also know that we did something to the accounts receivable. We need to track that here, which is going to tell us how much people owe us, our customers. But we also want to track it by a customer to know which customer owes us what. So in order to do that, we're going to go all the way to the right to the subsidiary ledger. We're going to take a scroll to the right. We're just going to scroll to the right. We're just going to enter this same information as we did to the general ledger, to another kind of type of ledger. It's another type of ledger, similar to the general ledger, but the subsidiary ledger. And this will give us the same information, however, dot by date. We have to add a new customer. So we are down here in CV36. CV36. We're going to say this is the customer star Lee. And we will have the debit in CV39. Uh, so we're in CV39. And I'm going to scroll up. And what we're going to do is, of course, we're going to select equals in CV39 scroll up just a bit and pick up that 950 debit let's do that now scrolling back down we're in cv39 selecting equals scrolling up just a bit and picking that 950 
and enter. That puts the 950 balance in the Star Lee subsidiary accounts. Down to the total here, we have 2,099. If we were to add up all the customers that owe us money, that amount then should be the amount on the trial balance as well. Note that if we scroll up top, that this amount, this 275, uh, was in a prior transaction, but uh, may not have made it to the recording. So if you don't have that 2,000, I mean 275 in CS14 for Anderson, uh, that is there as well. You can find that amount on the general ledger and match that out as well. We're going to go back to the trial balance and make sure that the balance is correct. So we're going to go left. Uh, we're going to go right on the left hand side of the frozen panes and then click right a couple times until we get to that 2099 there. That's the amount that we want to double check. If you look at the general ledger account, here's the uh, account. So if you tick and tie all this out, there's the 275 that was for Anderson for the prior transaction. And here is the 950 we are currently working on. Back to QuickBooks in order to see another invoice that we will be entering. And then we'll go back to Excel in order to enter that. We're going to have another invoice for a customer, Diana Martinez. It's going to be an invoice, which means it's going to increase accounts receivable. This is what it would look like in uh, an invoice in QuickBooks. This would be the date, same date, invoice number generating automatically. Once again, we have Judy Guitar Lessons. There's going to be another five hours for this customer, which will give us the rate of that times the rate of 190 gives us another 950 that the total no sales tax transaction is going to be a debit to receivable credit to service item. Same as we had before. So we're going to do some repetition on this back to Excel to put this in Excel. We will record this with the same date. Whoop, what happened there? Double undo that same dates. We're going to say 228. And it's going to be the same transaction here. We're going to be saying, I'm going to scroll back over to our trial balance. Cash is not affected. We're having an invoice. Receivables are going to go up. Receivables a debit balance. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing. Another debit. Copying the receivable. Right click, copy the receivable. Paste in Q8. Right click and paste 123. The bottom will be the same as well. That of service revenue. Here is service revenue. We're going to copy that. That's going to be a credit because it's income and it's increasing because we did work invoicing the client, work being the guitar lessons, putting that here into Q9, right clicking and pasting one, two, three. We'll then increase the indentation by going to the home tab, assign alignment group and increasing the indentation. Then we're going to multiply this out for the amount. Once again, it's going to be equal to the rate of 900, 190. Uh, dollars times the amount of hours which are five and that gives us the 950 we will credit 950 for the same amount We're, we have now journalized the second invoice and we will now post it to the general ledger starting with accounts receivable here's the accounts receivable on the journal entry here it is in uh, the trial balance and here it is over here in uh, the general ledger that's where we want to put the uh, post of this so I'm going to scroll over just a little bit so that we can see these more side by side. It's going to be right under the another 950. So it's, it is going to be repeating. This is going to be another invoice, same amount in AQ 16. We will select equals and point to that 950 debit in cell R8, R8 and enter, bringing the balance up to 3,049. Scrolling back to our trial balance, we should then see 3,049 in the accounts receivable. Then we're gonna we're gonna post the service item. That's gonna be down here in the income statement. So here it is on the income statement, it's in order. Assets, then liabilities, then equity, then in income and expenses. Same order on the general ledger, scrolling through that order. We first see the assets, then the liabilities, then the equities up here a little bit, and then the revenue, and then the expenses. We're gonna scroll up to the revenue there's the service revenue we are in bl9 bl9 we're going to select equals and just point to that 950 in s9 that'll bring the balance up from 950 by 950 to 1900 scrolling back to the trial balance to check that that 1900 is also on the trial balance in the correct location in the service items and here it is in ak 25 scrolling all the way down 
back in balance and we have income now so we do have income revenue of the credits being greater than the expenses this is not a loss that's revenue of credits being greater than expenses otherwise known as net income we also need to record the 950 again the second 950 to the subsidiary ledger so we'll take a stroll all the way to the right taking a stroll to the right to the subsidiary ledger which is on the right all the way to the right there it is and we are looking for uh, a new customer so we're going to scroll down and create a new customer customer name diana martinez and we will debit here so we're going to debit so we are in cr46 cr46 we're going to select equals in cr46 we're going to scroll up just a bit and point to that 950 right there let's do that now scrolling back down we are in cr46 selecting equals scrolling up to the top just a bit and picking that 950 and enter so there we have it there's the total 950 if we add them all up double clicking we see that we have 3045 scrolling back up to the top we're going to find that 3045 back on the trial balance once again by clicking just to the left of the frozen panes scrolling right a few times till we see that 3045 right there so we're going to do this a couple more times for these invoices and repeat this process next invoice we're going to have an invoice for lynn jackson it's going to be uh, an invoice accounts receivable same date the invoice number changes automatically and of course this is in quickbooks jumping back over to quickbooks by the way we are in quickbooks with another invoice that we will then enter into excel Here's the item number. It's going to be uh, Judy Guitar Lessons once again, and we're going to have 10 of them, or 10 hours, the quantity. And that's going to be times the 950 to bring the balance to uh, 1,900. So we're billing at the end of the month out of these uh, lessons. That's going to give us the 1,900. No sales tax, debiting, receivable, crediting, service revenue. Let's do that in Excel back to excel we can take a bit of a shortcut it's going to be the same thing so we're going to do this a bit faster now i'm going to say the date is the same and it's going to be these two accounts once again so i'm just going to copy these two on q8 and q9 highlighting both at one time right clicking those two cells and copying both of them and then we're going to put that in here in q11 right click and paste one two three or we can paste it we can paste actually the original and that'll indent it for us so i'm just going to paste normal normal pasting for once and there we have it and then we're going to we're going to have a new amount and that's going to equal the same 950 rate but now we're saying 10 hours so lynn is getting a lot better she's progressing well in her guitar lessons and we're going to say the credit then is going to be the same amount so the same type of journal entry we're going to now record that from here the general the general journal to the general ledger starting with the receivable first account or second account on the trial balance second account on the general ledger scrolling right to that second account scrolling down to an area for that second account here we are in aq 17 we're going to say that that then equals pointing to that 1900 in r11 that brings the balance from 3049 to 4949 scrolling back to the trial balance and up back up we see that 4949 here then we have the service item so here's the service item scrolling back down that's going to be our revenue account dark blue accounts it's in order assets liability equity income and expense we're going to find that same item over here on the general ledger by scrolling to the right taking a scroll to the right assets liabilities equity revenue expenses scrolling up we need the service revenue here it is it's in bl uh, 10 note they're all credits it's always a credit because it's a revenue account and they only go up in the credit direction we're going to say that this equals and point to that 1900 bring the balance up from 1900 to uh, 3800 scrolling back to the left we're going to see that that same amount is found on the trial balance hopefully uh, there it is 3800 and that brings our net income up as well credits beating the debits revenue beating the expenses by 2661 let's see the next one actually we're not quite done yet one more thing we're going to post this to the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger as well we have a new customer lynn and we want to make sure to uh, track that information 
So we're gonna go take a scroll all the way to the subsidiary ledger. I'm just holding down the right arrow until we get to the subsidiary ledger for the accounts receivable. And then we're gonna scroll down to a new one here. We need a new space for the new client who is Lynn Jackson. So we're gonna put that there. And then within the debit column, we're gonna say equals in CV46. Then we're gonna scroll up just a bit and point to that 1,900. Let's do that now. Scrolling back down, we're going, we are now in CV46, selecting equals, scrolling up just a bit and pointing to that 1,900 and enter. There we have it. Here's the total. Looking at the total, 4,949. Uh, 4, that should be found on the trial balance. Let's check it out. We're going to go right to the left of the frozen panes and then go right to uh, bounce back to the 4,949 in AK6. Looks good. Let's see what's the next invoice in QuickBooks. Next invoice will be for Jenny Jones. It's going to be the customer. It's going to be an invoice once again, same date, billing at the end of the month for the hours for the month. It's going to be invoice number 13. It's going to be Angela guitar lessons this time. We're going to have the rate of 150. There's going to be a quantity of seven hours that we're billing to this customer, Jenny Jones. That gives us a total of $1,050. That will be the total we expect to receive and therefore put into accounts receivable by creating the invoice. The other side then will be service revenue. Let's see that uh, posting in Excel. This will be the same transaction in essence, so we can copy even the date. I'm just going to copy this whole thing. I'm going to put the cursor there. I'm going to go from P11 to S12, P to S P11 to S12. Then just right click that whole thing and copy it. We're going to skip a line and put that in P14. We are in P14, right clicking and pasting, not one, two, three, but uh, the whole thing because it, that'll, that'll do that little indent if we have the indent. If we don't have it, then that's okay anyways. There is the transaction. So now we have journalized the transaction. Oh, oh, wait a second. The amounts, however, need to change. So I'm going to delete the amounts. And we'll put the new amounts, new rate here. So we're in R14, have deleted the amounts. We're going to select equals and the amount of 150. That's the hourly rate times seven hours. Gives us 1,050. We're going to have the same debit and credit, so we're going to put that in the credit item as well. Now we will post this journal entry from the general journal here to the general uh, ledger, starting with accounts receivable, first uh, account on our <laughs> journal entry, and it's the second account on the trial balance, and therefore the second account uh, on the general ledger. Scrolling over to the second account on the general ledger, the accounts receivable, we are here in AQ18. AQ18, we're going to select equals and point to that 1,050, bringing the balance up from 4,949 to 5,999. Scrolling back to the accounts receivable, we see that 5,999 there as well. Then the service item, here is the service item. It's in order, assets, liability, equity, income, and expense on the trial balance as is on the general ledger. There's the service item, it's gonna be the same location on the general ledger, so we will scroll over to it. Here are the assets, there are the liabilities, equity, revenue, and expenses. Looks like the service item is up top. Have should have memorized where that is pretty much by now. It's on cell BL11, all credits, all revenue items. And we're going to select that equals and point to another credit of 1,050, bringing the balance up from 3,800 to 4,850. Back to the service item on the trial balance and see if that same amount is in the trial balance, which we believe it will be. There it is, 4,850. Now we just need to record this accounts receivable again. We already recorded it to the general ledger, which recorded it to the trial balance, but now we need to record it by customer. And to do that, we're gonna go all the way to the subsidiary ledger by scrolling right. So we will take a scroll to the right for the subsidiary ledger we're going to need a new item so we are in columns cr to cx scrolling down to a new item which is in row uh, what row is this 50 and we're going to have a new customer jenny j 
Jones. And we will be on the debit side, and we're going to select equal there. We're going to scroll up just a bit and point to that 150. Let's do that now. Scrolling back down, we are in CR3053, selecting equals. Scrolling up just a bit and pointing to that 1050 and enter. There we have it. Scrolling back down, there's our 1050. Double clicking on the total here, we add everything up and it adds up to 5,999. That then should be the amount on the trial balance as well. If we click just to the left of the frozen panes and then go right a little bit, we see that 5,999 looks good. Let's see what's next. Next, we have an invoice for Di Diana Miller. It's going to be another invoice, also for Angela's guitar lessons at a rate of $150. And uh, it's going to be just for that $150. Actually, we're going to have six, six hours there. So it's six hours at $150 or $900. So here are the $900, no sales tax. It's going to be a debit to receivable credit to the service revenue. Let's do that in Excel. Back to Excel. It's going to be the same journal entry, so we're going to do this once again. We're going to copy the whole thing, but this time not the numbers because the numbers will be different. So we're copying, for, we're going to highlight or select from P14 to Q15. Let go, right click those selected area and copy. And then we're going to put that in cell P17. Right click and paste one, two, three. Actually, I'm going to paste it normal. I'm going to just paste it again. Right click and paste normal there it is and then the amount is going to be we're going to say equal to the rate of 150 dollars per hour times the number of hours six hours and that'll give us 900 dollars. then we're going to have a credit of the same 900 dollars. there we have that we have journalized the journal entry and we'll now go through that process of posting once again to the general ledger here's the accounts receivable here it is on the trial balance same location on the general ledger, second account. Scroll into the right so we see it side by side. Scrolling down to the new open area that in cell AQ19. We're in cell AQ19, we're selecting equals and pointing to this 900, bringing the balance from 5,999 up by 900 to 6,899. We should see that same amount over here. We see the 6,899. We are then going to credit the service item, $900. Here's the service item down here. And we're going to see the same location on the general ledger. Scrolling right to find that service item. It's in order assets and then liabilities and equity, then income and expenses. Up to the top, we see the service items. They're all credits at this point. We're in cell BL12, BL12. That's going to equal and point to that 900, bringing the balance from 4,850 up by 900 to 5,750. Going to scroll back to the trial balance and see if that's what is in the trial balance. And we see here that we have 5,750, bringing net income up to 4,611. We also need to post that, of course, to the uh, subsidiary ledger for the receivable. So we're going to take a scroll all the way to the right. This is going to be by customer and find that subsidiary ledger once again. So we're going all the way to the right, looking for the subsidiary ledger. Here it is. If we scroll up, this is the subsidiary ledger. We are on CR to CX. Scrolling back down, we're going to start a new subsidiary ledger. This is going to be for Diana Miller, and we're going to be in cell CV53, uh, and we're going to select equals, and then we're going to go up just a bit and point to that $900. Let's do that now. Scrolling back down, we are in CV53, selecting equals, scrolling up just a bit and pointing to that $900. If we add these up, this amount is going to be uh, $6,899. That then should be on the trial balance. Just note that the next time we're going to record another invoice and we're going to add a few more cells here. So your total may not be right here. You may have a couple more cells that we will be adding and will magically appear uh, as we move forward. So scrolling back up, 9,866. We're going to go right to the, to the left of the frozen panes. 
scroll right just a bit and we see that eight six thousand uh, uh eight ninety nine here in the receivables back to quickbooks next transaction another invoice we're entering all the invoices as of the end of the month for uh these items for the surface items for the guitar lessons we have 228 invoice number will be 15 angela guitar lessons 150 dollar rate nine hours for jill gonzalez the customer and that's going to give us uh 1350 so this invoice will then debit accounts receivable 1350 credit sales for the same amount let's see that in excel we're just going to copy the entire thing this time once again we're going to copy the p17 to q18 p17 to q18 right click and copy we'll put that here in p21 right click and paste normal and then we'll give the amount the amount is going to be equal to 150 times the number of hours which is nine that gives us 1350 we're going to credit the same amount saying negative of that number there are the debits and credits we're going to then post this this is the journal entry that we will post now to the general uh general ledger here is the receivable scrolling up here's the receivable there and if we scroll to the right there's the receivable there and we are going to be in cell aq20 we will select equals and point to that 1000 350 and enter next side is going to be in the service item so we're going to just scroll i'm just going to post both of these now we're going to scroll all the way to the right and look for that service item so it's in the same order same transaction and then we'll scroll up to find that service item uh not quite there there it is with all the credits remember they're all credits all revenue all going the same direction we're in bl uh 13 so bl 13 we'll select equals and point to that 1350 bring the balance to uh 7100 let's check that balance and then we'll check the accounts receivable as we post to the subsidiary ledger scrolling back here's that 7100 back in balance net income has gone up accounts receivable is here we're going to check that to the subsidiary ledger as we post this one more time by customer the customer being jill gonzalez in this case we're going to go all the way to the right till we find that subsidiary ledger we're taking a scroll taking a scroll to the right to the subsidiary ledger and we see that now on the columns cr through cx scrolling back down till we get a new set of subsidiary ledgers and we are on cr 57 typing the name of jill gonzalez we're on the debit side so we are in cell cr60 we are going to select equals in that cell we're going to scroll up just a bit point to that 1350 let's do that now scrolling back down we're in cell cr60 we're going to select equals we are selecting equals and then we're going up to the top and we're just a bit finding that 1350 and enter so there we have it and jill now owes us 1350 we are now at a balance of 8249 double clicking that is all the information in the gl by customer scrolling back up to the top we're going to click right to the right and see if that is also the balance on the trial balance we're going to click right just a bit and just a little bit and it'll pop back over hopefully 8249 next invoice will be for noah davis it will be an invoice same date we're going to have the invoice number populates automatically here in quickbooks then we have the item which is going to be rebecca guitar lessons she charges uh we've got a hundred dollars an hour we have eight hours here therefore eight hundred dollars invoice then is going to be a debit to the receivable credit to the service item for that 800 let's see it in excel so here we are in excel we're going to copy this thing again and paste it over note the only thing changing here is really the subsidiary ledger when we track this information it's all going into the receivable we're going to collect it hopefully with cash but we got to know who we're going to collect from so we're going to copy uh, or select the cells from p22 q21 and right click and copy then we'll put our cursor in p23 right click and paste one two three 
or let's paste normal, sorry, paste non-num123, but normal, and that'll just give us that indentation if we have that formatting there, otherwise it does not make a difference. Now we're going to make the uh, formula, which will be equals, and 100 is the rate times the number of hours, which are 8. The rate and the 8 give us the 800. And then we're going to have the credits for the same amount of 800. And there's our journal entry. We're going to post this out once again, starting with accounts receivable. That's the second account on the trial balance and the second account on the general ledger, as I'm sure we are aware at this point. Scrolling down to the next open item in AQ21, we're going to select equals and point to that 800, bringing the balance up from 8,249 to 9,049. We're going to scroll over and post the sales first and then go back and check these since we've done these a few times. We're going to scroll to the right looking for that sales item. It's in order, assets, liabilities, and then equity. The service sales is going to be up top. We see it here. All credits, because it always goes up in the credit direction. We will have, of course, another credit down here in BL14. So we are in BL14. Selecting equals, pointing to that 800, bringing the balance up from 7,100 by 800 to 7,900. Scrolling back to the right, we should also find that 7,900 on the trial balance. And it should be here, 7,900. We are back in balance here. We have net income of 6,761 credits over the debits if we were to double click like so. We see that the accounts receivable has been posted. We're going to post it one more time to the subsidiary ledger. So we're going to scroll all the way to the right and do this to the subsidiary ledger one more time. Scrolling right, taking a scroll to the right till we find those subsidiary ledgers in columns. CR to CX, scrolling down to the newest item down here to a new one. And we're going to say we have a new person or a new customer who is also a person, but a customer too, uh, Noah Davis. So I'm typing that in uh, CV57. It'll probably be already in your worksheet, by the way. And then we're going to scroll down and we are in CV60. We're in CV60. What we're going to do in CV60 is select equals and then scroll up just a bit and point to that $800 in R23. Let's do that now. Scrolling back, we are in CV60. We're selecting equals. We're scrolling up just a bit. We're pointing to that $800 in R23 and selecting enter. So now we have $800 in Noah Davis. Account that adds up to a total here. If we double click, it's adding up all the accounts of 9,046. Let's check and see if that is on the trial balance. Scrolling up, clicking just to the left of the frozen panes and going right just a bit to have it pop over. We see that 9,046 here as well. Looks good. Next invoice. We're billing out all these invoices for our guitar lesson. The next customer we have is Pam Davis. Invoice. Same number on the QuickBooks item here on the QuickBooks invoice. It's Rebecca's uh, guitar. That's who had the guitar lessons. She charges, we charge for her $100. And we have eight hours here. That is another $800 charge. No sales tax. Journal entry then debit uh, receivable for the invoice. And credit the service revenue. Well, let's see that in Excel. We are back in Excel, same type of transaction, so we're going to copy the same accounts. We're in P23, scrolling down or selecting through Q24, right-click and copy. We'll paste that in P26, right-click and paste 1, 2, 3. Or <laughs> I'm going to paste that again and paste it normal. Right-click and paste normal. And that'll just indent that cell right there. And then we'll do the calculation here in R26. Within R26, we're going to select equals. We're going to point to one, or we're going to have $100. And then that's going to be the rate. And then we're going to multiply that times eight. Those are the hours. And that'll give us $800. We're going to credit $800 as well. Now we've journalized the journal entry in the general journal. And we'll post it to the general ledger. Starting with the receivable here, that's what we want to post. There it is there on the trial balance. We want to post it here on the general ledger. Scrolling to the right till we see the next account side by side. We're down here in AQ22. AQ22 selecting equals, pointing to the $800 in R26, bringing the balance up to 9849 
We're then going to credit the uh, service, that's a revenue account, and we're just going to go all the way to the right and do that now and then check the trial balance and then post to the general ledger checking this amount. So we're going to go to the right. We have the uh, assets, the liabilities, the equity, and then the income and expenses. Scrolling up to the revenue, here's our revenue account in BL15. We will select equals and then point to that second $800 bringing the balance up from 7,900 by 800 to 8,700. Back to the trial balance. Let's see if this is the amount on the trial balance. Scrolling left to the trial balance to see if that is indeed the case. There it is. Back in balance. Net income, 7,561. Then we're going to post this same thing to our subsidiary ledger in order by customer. Scrolling to the right till we find that. We're taking a scroll to the right to find the subsidiary ledger. Scrolling all the way right. It's in columns CR through CX. We're going to find a new account down here again, so it's going to be way down at the bottom. So we have a lot of customers at this point. It's been good business. We're saying Pam Davis or Pam Smith is in uh, CR46. We're then going to put our cursor in CR767. We put that in CR64, not 46, CR64, sorry about that. And then we're down here in CR67, and we're going to select equals, and then we're going to scroll up just a bit and point to that $800 in R26. Let's do that now. Scrolling down, we're currently in cell CR67, selecting equals, Scrolling back up just a bit and pointing to the $800 in R26 and enter. There we have it. If we total up all the accounts, we have 9,849. Scrolling back up to the top to check if that is the amount on the trial balance. Putting our cursor just to the left of the frozen panes and going right just a bit. There's the 9,849. 9, Looks good. Back to QuickBooks for the last invoice. We're going to have the customer, Grace Matthews, another invoice here. The date will be 228, invoice number 17. We're going to have the item, Rebecca Guitar. Once again, we're going to say the rate is $100, and we will have six hours of them, giving us the $600 total. Transaction then, because it's an invoice, will increase accounts receivable by the 600 and service revenue as well by 600 Let's see that in Excel. So here we are, we're in the last one. We're the last one here. We're going to copy the cells from P26 to Q27. Right click and copy. We'll paste one more time in P29. Right click and paste. We're going to paste the normal one, pasting normal. And then we're going to have the amount uh, that will be in R29. We're going to select equals. And we will have a $100 rate. Multiply it times the number of hours, or six. That'll give us 600. Then we're going to have a credit for the same amount. I'm going to put negative of that number. There is the credit. Here is our journal entry. We have journalized in the general journal and will now post. We have the accounts receivable. That's going to be the second account here and the second account on the general ledger. Scrolling over to the general ledger, second account. We are in uh, cell AQ23. AQ23, we select equals and point to that $600, bringing the balance up to $10,449. I'm then going to scroll over to find this service item. It's in order. Assets, and then liabilities in orange, and then the light blue are equity, and then we have the dark blue, which is the revenue. Scrolling back up, here's our service items. All credits, they're always going to be credits because they only go up in the one direction, the credit direction. And it's BL16. We will select equals and point to this $600, bring the balance up from $8,700 by $600 to $9,300. Scrolling back over to the trial balance to see that $9,300 should be matching here. There's the $9,300. We're back in balance. The revenue is here, so we now have income, revenue of credits beating the expenses. That's not a loss, but income of 8,161. And we see that the accounts receivable is 10,449. We need to record the same amount here 
into our subsidiary ledger. Scrolling right to find that subsidiary ledger. We're taking a scroll all the way to the right to get that subsidiary ledger, which is in order by uh, account. Scrolling all the way to the right, here we have them from columns CR to uh, CX. And we will scroll down to the next new item. Here we have it in cell CV64. We'll type Grace Matthew. And we will have a debit. So we're going to debit within Grace Matthews account. Scrolling back up. Well, what's going to happen is we will be in CV64. Select equal. And then we will scroll back up and point to cell um, R26 to pick up that 600. Let's do that now. Scrolling back down, we are in CV76. We're selecting equal. We're scrolling up just a bit in order to find cell C. I mean R29 to pick up that 600 and enter. So there we have it. We have that 600 here. If we add up the total, we're at 10,449. 10,449. Let's see if that checks out to the account receivable on the trial balance. Clicking to the left of the frozen panes, just to the left, and then scrolling right just a bit, we see that 10,449. Then we're going to see what happens. We're finally going to see what happens on the financial statements. So I'm going to unfreeze the panes first. We're going to go up top. We're going to go to the view tab. We're going to go to the windows group and those frozen panes. We're going to select those and then unfreeze them. Then let's see what happens to the financials. So we're selecting accounts receivable. We're going to point that over to the account to the financials because we did something to that and want to see what happens to the financials. And then over down here, we were working on the service revenue point that over to the to the financials scrolling right to the financials taking a stroll all the way to the right till we see the financials scrolling back up it's in column bw to cc these are the financials the receivables updated automatically we see that the total assets still match liabilities and equity good sign the income statement now has a an income item for service revenue nine thousand three hundred and that brings up net income to 8,161. That's part of our calculation in the statement of owner's equity. It's part of the ending balance, which is 152,336. Uh, that amount, of course, found as well on the balance sheet. Hello. In this presentation, we will enter service items that we will then use to create invoices for services done by the company within QuickBooks Pro 2018. If you've been following along with us, we will be continuing with the Get Great Guitars problem. If not, that is okay. We will be creating, in essence, service items, which are kind of like inventory items. Those will be used in order to generate invoices, which we will generate invoices for services done by some of the people that work within the company. We'll have different billable rates for them and create the invoices based on the service items that we will now generate. Uh, if you have the backup file, you can restore the backup file to this point by going to file and restore the company to this point. We currently have the open windows tab open to view that. You wanna to go to the file open windows only open window at this time is the home tab in order to open the home tab if it's not open already go to the company and home tab at the top here is the scenario we want to make an invoice for in this case we do sell guitars and we have guitar lessons we're going to invoice for the guitar lessons that have been done for the month in order to invoice for the guitar lessons done for the month we will need to set up items for them uh, here. And so we're going to create items that will then be used within the invoice. When we do something like counting the hours, oftentimes we're going to count the hours for the month, have a billable rate per, in this case, person teaching the lesson, and then multiply times the number of hours. That's how we're going to generate the invoices. So to start this process, we're going to set up the service items. Once they're set up, for the one time, it's all we have to set them up for. Then we can generate the invoice and they'll set up the invoice as uh, needed after that first setup process of the item lists. Let's look at that process. We're going to go lists up top. We're going to go to item list. 
Here is our item lists so far. We have these services at this point. We have these inventory items at this point. We are going to add service items that will then be used on our invoice that we will generate for the month. We're going to add three of these. I'm going to do them one at a time, or we will do them one at a time. We're going to go down to the drop up window at the bottom, the items drop up window. We want to have a new. So we're going to add a new and the default is at the service item. And we will keep that default rather than go into an inventory item. And so I'm going to tab through this. We're going to say the item name and number. We're going to have, we're going to have Jody guitar lessons. And we have no sub account. This going to be, it's going to be the same thing out down here. Jody guitar lessons. The rate is going to be 190 an hour in this case. Tax code. We have no, no tax code in this case. It's not something that's subject to sales tax, in other words. If we select the drop down, we're going to have the income account, not merchandise, but service, uh, service revenue. If we wanted to have a, a different account for it, specifically for this type of service, then of course we can type in guitar uh, lessons or something like that to have a different account for it. And we'd have to set up that account as a revenue account. We're going to keep it under the generic service uh, revenue at this time. At any point in the future, if we want to break that out, we can then uh, start tracking that in its own account. I'm going to say save or OK. And we're going to ignore. I'm going to ignore this. And then we're going to add a new item again. We're going to have another individual, Angela Guitar Lessons. I'm going to say items at the bottom. We're going to say new item. Once again, it's going to be another service item. And we're going to say it is Angela Guitar Lessons. We'll then tab through this. I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to copy this. We're going to copy it. I suggest copying this and pasting it into the description. The rate here is going to be 150 tax. We're going to say no tax here. So we're not charging sales tax for the service item as it's not needed most of the time. And the accounts then, if we select the drop down, once again, we're looking for the service. And it's going to be, of course, an income of some type. We're going to set it up as the generic service as was picked here when we created the, the company using both service and merchandise as our company file that was set up within QuickBooks Pro. Then we're going to say OK. That's our second individual doing the service lessons that we're going to bill at the separate rate. Next one, we're going to do one more time here. We've got the items at the bottom. So we're going to go to edit or new, I should say new item, new item. It once again will be a service item. We're going to say that the item name is going to be Rebecca guitar lessons. I'm going to copy that this time, copy that as we go. And we're going to put that in the description. Same thing. We're going to tab over to the rate, $100, Rebecca. And we're going to have no tax, so non-taxable uh, information there. It's not subject to sales tax, in other words. Then we're going to select the drop-down on the account side. We want the service, so we're going to select the service revenue. It is, once again, if an income account type. Make sure it's an income account type. And then we're going to say OK. And I'm going to go ahead and... And now that we have our items here, our new service items for the month for uh, the guitar lessons by our three individuals performing them at the three different rates for them, we can now set an invoice up for those uh, hours that were charged over the month. This is going to be a type of area, if we go back to the home tab, that we could track down here with the time clock enter sheet. So this time clock could punch in and out the time and then track that time to the create invoice. And that could be a useful tool. If they're employees, it could be used for two things. That's why it's down here in the employee section. We can use it to both generate the, the invoice by having a billable rate times uh, the time that we have here. And we could also use it to calculate payroll if it was also applicable in that format. In this case, I'm not gonna do that. Oftentimes we may use an outside system as well just to track the time. We might just do it in Excel. We might have another software 
that tracks the time and, and have our rates set up. So our rates, in this case, in this system, our rates are set up on the item list now. And all we have to do is track our time in some format. Then we can bill whenever we decide to set up our billing progress. It, it might be monthly, it might be every couple weeks, it might be weekly, it might be daily, that we have to go through there and, and gather up our hours and then create and send out those invoices. We're gonna do this one at the end of the month. So at this point, we're gonna create an invoice. We're gonna create these invoices for the hours that we have had guitar lessons for throughout the month. And we're gonna say enter. The first one, we're looking through the timesheets for Jody. So Jody has counted her times. She's got uh, three clients that uh, we'll be dealing with that we're gonna bill for. First one we're going to say is a new customer and that's gonna be star. Lee, this is a new customer, so we're just going to type that in and say tab. We're going to not set up the full customer, although in practice it might be good to do that, to set up the, the address and the contact information. But we're going to put in this uh, invoice information using the uh, quick add, just giving us the name to complete the invoice. We're going to invoice as of the end of the month, 228-21. We are working in the future at this time. We're going to say that the invoice should generate the number automatically. And we're going to keep that there and we're going to say the terms then, in, in other words, there's no purchase order applied here. We're going to say the terms are going to be net 30. And the item then is going to be the new item we set up, the service item, which we could select through the drop down. Or we could type in the service item, which is Jody Guitar Lessons, and it should pop up there. And we've got the service item, that's the one we want. And then within the quantity now, it's going to be a 190 an hour. So, and we're going to put in the quantity of hours, which is five in this case. So that's how we're going to calculate this out pretty simply, pretty easily. Uh, note down here, we have the sales tax not being calculated because it is a service. That's going to be our first invoice. What will happen when we record that? It's going to debit accounts receivable. It's going to credit the revenue account. I'm not going to go and check that until we do at least three of them and then we'll go and check it and then do the next three for our three uh, people performing the lessons here. That's going to be our first invoice. This time I'm going to say save and new and create another one. So save and new. We're going to, uh, you've changed it. We're going to say yes. And I'm going to say add. Next one is going to be another new customer. So if we select the drop down, Diana. Martinez not here I'm gonna add it Diana Martinez music lessons was the customer who had music music lessons with Jody so we're gonna say tab we're gonna once again use the quick add rather than the set up no address that we're gonna put in or the or the phone number and whatnot quick add there's the item there's the date there's the invoice generated automatically and nothing in the PO. The terms we're going to have once again being the net 30. The item we're going to have Jody Guitar Lessons. It should pop up automatically once we type that in there. Or we can select the drop down. But once we type it in, it should be there automatically. And then tab. And the information we have set up will pull over once again. This one is going to be another five hours set for uh, Diana. Once again, this will debit accounts receivable specifically for the customer of Diana. Credit the sales revenue. No cost of goods sold. No sales tax. We're not selling inventory. Once again, save and new. And we're going to say yes. Next item, a new customer. So if we hit the drop down, not there. We're going to type in Lynn Jackson. And tab. We're going to add the quick add for the new customer. Tabbing over 228, invoice is correct. Tab, tab, we're going to say the terms is net R net 30. And once again, Jody, tab, quantity here, 10. And there's going to be our invoice here, uh, generating this invoice. Uh, no sales tax as well in the journal entry debiting accounts receivable crediting sales. If we save and close this, then we can check this out. We're gonna first go to our balance sheet. So we're gonna to go to reports, 
Company Financial, scrolling down to the balance sheet. We're going to change the date range in the customized report item so that when we drill down on the information, we can see the data. 010121, we are working in the future to 123121. So January 1st, 2021 to December 31st, 2021. And OK. There is our information. Double clicking on the accounts receivable. We should then see our three items, Star, Deanna, and Lynn, invoiced as um, right there. Done and done. Closing out of that. Closing out of that. The other side of this will be in the income statement. So reports, company and financial, profit and loss. Selecting that. Date to range, changing to 01012121231. And we have the service revenue now for uh, the guitar lessons. So if we double click on that, there we have it. And we have Star, Diana, and Lynn. If we double click on any of those, uh, we see the invoice related to them. One more item, closing that out, closing this out, we should probably check out. And that is the reports, the company and receivables, and customer balance detail. And now we can see our customers for Lynn, there's our invoice. And for Star, there's our invoice. And we had another one, didn't we? Diana, there's the invoice. So those are the three. We're going to do this once again for Angela, who has three clients as well. And we'll put in the invoices there. Going back to the Home tab, we will select the invoice. And this time we've got another new client. It's going to be Jenny Jones. We're going to type in drop down not there so we'll just type it in uh, Jenny Jones tab we're gonna quick add I'm just gonna select return to do that tabbing through this same date because we're recording all these invoices as of the end of the month here terms are gonna be net 30 net 30 once we set the net 30 one time it should copy the format every time we see Jenny Jones in the future when we invoice Jenny Jones in the future this is going to be for Angela's guitar lessons. Once we select a tab, we have a different rate to that rate we set up of 150. We're going to put in the hours related to the customer client of Jenny Jones. And so this is, these are, remember, Angela's hours assigned to the customer Jenny Jones of seven hours. So the 150 times the seven is the 1050. No sales tax, journal entry, debiting accounts receivable, crediting the uh, service revenue. We're going to say save and new for Angela's next client, saving the template so it'll have the terms next time. Diana Miller, once again, not there. So we're going to add by typing in Diana Miller and then tab, quick add. Tabbing through, invoice numbers the same, terms will be net 30. We're going to have the item that's going to be Angela. So we could select Angela here, but we're going to type in Angela's guitar lessons, 150 an hour. And we had six hours here for Diana. And therefore, the invoice is 900. What's going to be recorded here? Debit accounts receivable, credit the service revenue. Save and new one more time, saving the template and the format for this client, Diana Miller. Next one, Jill Gonzalez, drop down, not there. Going to add it by typing Jill Gonzalez, tab. We're going to quick add it once again. Tabbing through this, date's correct. Invoice number populates automatically. Address is good. No purchase order. Terms will be net 30. And the item is what we set up, which is Angela. This time, nine hours. Tab. And there we have the bill there. We are now going to say save and close. And yes. And if we go through our, our financials then, the balance sheet, balance sheet under the accounts receivable, double clicking, scrolling down, we now see these Jenny Jones, Diana Miller, and Jill. These are the three set up, double clicking on them. 
we see that they are for the item of Angela. Closing that out, we can see the other side on the profit and loss. In the open windows, in the service item, double clicking on that, we see Jenny Jones, Dinah Miller, and Jill Gonzalez as well once again. Closing this out, if we then go to the customer balance detail, we'll see the AR broken out by who owes us money. We see Diana, we see uh, Diana Miller here, we see Eric Music, Jenny Jones, uh, Jill Gonzalez, Lynn Jackson we set up fairly recently, uh, Star, and there we go. So it should all add up. Note that we have the 8,249 it does all add up, which adds up to what is on the balance sheet. If we go back to the balance sheet, that should be and will be the same amount in accounts receivable. If it's not, you probably have a date problem and just change to make sure the dates are tying out. All right, we're going to do this one more time. We're going to go back to the Home tab. We're going to select the Create Invoices, or one more set of three, one more time for the uh, guitar lesson giver, Rebecca, who has three more invoices for three more clients. First one, Noah, not in the drop down. So if we set them up, Noah Davis, gonna say tab. We're gonna do a quick add. We're gonna tab through this, states correct. Invoice is populating as it should. No purchase order, terms are gonna be net 30. We're gonna have the, the uh, item this time being Rebecca's guitar lessons, tab. $100 for Rebecca's guitar lessons. We have eight hours billed to Noah. We're going to put the eight hours there, tabbing through. No sales tax. Once we record this, we are going to increase the accounts receivable and increase revenue. And let's say save and new. We will save the template and add this. Next item is going to be Grace Matthews. So if we select the drop dropdown, not there. Typing in Grace Matthew, tabbing through, tab, quick add, dates good, invoice, which populates on its own, terms are going to be N30, and we're once again working with the item of Rebecca. We could select with the drop down or type in Rebecca Guitar Lessons, which we just set up at the rate of $100. We are billing this customer, Grace Matthews, six hours. Multiplying that out, $600, no sales tax, journal entry will be, debit accounts receivable, and credit uh, service revenue. Save and new one more time, saying yes to the template. And we have this time Pam Smith drop down, no customer name, Pam Smith. We then will add it by typing Pam Smith, selecting tab, selecting enter for the quick add. Tab, dates correct, tab, invoice looks good. That should populate build to, populates automatically, no PO number. Terms are going to be the net 30 tab. Item is going to be Rebecca. So I'm just going to type in Rebecca Guitar Lessons. will populate on its own. It is a service item. Tab, we've got the rate at 100, the hours of 8, giving us 800 at this uh, invoice no sales tax here therefore journal entry being debiting or increasing the accounts receivable and the other side being uh, sales revenue let's save and close and check that out first so I'm going to save and yes we're going to first go to the balance sheet go into the balance sheet scrolling up to accounts receivable we see the 10,449 if we double click on that scroll to the bottom we see Noah, Grace, Pam, the three new we set up, double clicking on either one of them. We see the invoice related to them with Rebecca as the item and the $100 rate being used to generate the invoice. Closing this and closing this, we can then go to the profit and loss, the other side. We can look at the service revenue or income, double clicking on that. Scrolling to the bottom, we see once again the 800, the 600, the 800, double clicking on any one of those. We will then see an invoice just generated with the $100 rate and the Rebecca item that has been set up. Closing this, closing this, going back to the uh, customer balance detail, 
We then see uh, Lynn, we see Noah, Pam Davis, we see Smith Guitars, we see Smith, and uh, we see Star, um, Star Lee. So we've got everything set up here, and these are the customers that we want to check for their balances. We see the ending balance then at 10449 which will be, as long as we have the correct dates, the amount on the balance sheet under accounts receivable as well as it is here. So that is the recording of invoices after having entered the service items for those invoices. In essence, putting in a billable rate, tracking the hours that we worked with clients over a time period, in this case being a month then using that billable rate to make the invoices in accordance with the number of hours per uh, person that we worked with.